Melissa, or my name is Melissa. I'm probably many and and few things. <laughs> this is a, a hopefully a short video to communicate to you some of what you can expect at the drumming journey gathering in Paramatta on the Wednesday. I believe that's the 19th of June. And so I'll just show you some of the tools. Sage smoke. This sage, you know those beautiful smoke swirls. Um, this sage uh, was a plant that I had and uh, took with me to Pekka Pekka, which is not too far from Paramatta. And my soul sister has kept it there and it has an interesting pattern of dropping a branch just before I arrive. And so it's apparently just dropped another branch. So this is, it's good to know your sources, I feel, when you're using some of these tools because the energies um, are communicated across forms. <laughs> so sage is uh, traditionally used to, to purify, to protect. Uh, I worked with somebody on a, a very fascinating journey down the Hudson River uh, to bring awareness to what the river was facing. And um, there was a, a very clever man who, who called it the Transit Smudge Authority. So I don't know if you know that, Transit uh, Security Authority or whatever it's called, the TSA. Um, because you have to hold your arms out when you get smudged and you get wanded down, it's a very similar sensation. I think I would much prefer to be smudged in airports than whatever it is those machines are doing. So part of the initial part of the process uh, is to clear away what isn't needed. You know, somebody I went on a water walk with uh, passed on a phrase to me, I think it's probably from the Lakota people, but maybe it's maybe I'm misunderstanding that, but she's Lakota and Dakota. And uh, she said, smudge yourself before you judge yourself. And I think that's a really good motto, you know, clear, <laughs> clear it. Now what I'm um, moving the air with, because if I were to, to blow on it, then I'm blowing my stuff into what's meant to purify you. So uh, using a hand, or in this case, um, feathers. And these are um, also from my soul sister from Pekka Pekka and the Kedidu feathers. Uh, Kedidu must have gotten tangled in the, an electric line or something was found on the property and so preserved the feathers. And Kedidu is apparently about trust. So you think about that big old body of it. It has <laughs> like whoo, whoo, through the forest um, trusting that it will fly. I've seen them recently because uh, I'm here in the Cody trees and uh, the west of Auckland, and they swoop and then turn directions or turn around and swoop back almost like a trapeze artist. So I think they like take the energy to go up and then they use their body weight to swoop back down into the position they want to go, at least as far as I can tell. And so that is not just a, an aside me explaining about the Kedidu. What I intend to work with you um, or whoever uh, joins me on the evening is in developing relationships with nature beings. Uh, this is a program I recently did with Sandra Ingerman and I've been really grateful to have this um, training with her because so much of the drumming journeys really relies on having more experience. You can still gain so much just by drumming. So I'll show you my drum, one of my drums. And um, you can certainly gain something simply by being there, brand new. And yet there are certain aspects uh, of the world that are unfamiliar if you're new, like power animal and the portal and the different worlds, the lower world, the middle world, the upper world, um, the guides that you might find, the, the means of the journey to go out and pay attention so you can retrace your steps when you come back. So all of these things can be unfamiliar. And what I um, really appreciated about this recent training with the middle world journeys is that some of those elements aren't needed because it's essentially like a parallel reality. 
whatever the environment is. And in Paramata, we're going to be in this beautiful boathouse. So we're going to be right next to the water. And uh, the idea is that you're imaginatively in your mind walking out the door of the place that you're in and going on a journey. And so there's no need to go into a portal to the upper or lower worlds. You always will have um, guidance through uh, the Divine Mother and any ancestral or helping spirits, but we don't need to make a direct connection to a specific power animal. So that will save us some time and we can really focus on uh, what I want to focus on, which is this developing um, relationships, good relations with nature beings. And so part of how we do that, how we journey, uh, is through percussion, a steady beat. And this drum is one that my mom made for me. <clears throat> and again, knowing your tools, knowing who made them and the source of the materials is really a part of, I would say, the integrity of the practice. Uh, we want to be as mindful about about the materials that we're using here as we would be anywhere else. So uh, this is my very first drum. And the drum, I, I will bring this drum, but most likely the drum that I will use for the journeys is another drum that I made that it has been awakened. So that means it's, uh, it's alive. <laughs> it has a, a, a strong healing, um, transforming power I, I feel, I found, that's the feedback that I've received from people who have had um, journeys with this drum. And <clears throat> because it's alive, my elder who has brought it to life has asked that it's not photographed. So um, hopefully you'll never see a photo of my drum. And um, that's another uh, kind of a, a point of protocol in the practice is that this is very much about being present and about experiencing it and not about documenting it. So um, there will be no recordings. <laughs> a lot of times at these sorts of gatherings we might do a selfie afterwards, but um, during it it's really about fully immersing yourself. So this drum, <clears throat> you can see, <clears throat> and um, I'll just give you a sense of the beat. So you have a a sense of how the steady rhythm helps to transform your brainwave state, make you uh, a little bit more lucid and receptive. speed of the sound is the indication to retrace your steps and come back. And so this brings me around to a point that uh, Lauren wanted me to be sure to address. Sandra Ingerman, who's main proponent of core shamanic drumming, so that means it's not pulling from any one particular culture or tribe, you know, we're not looking to appropriate, but we're looking to recognize how across all cultures there's a shamanic tradi tradition, and shamanism often translates to mean the one who sees in the dark, right? So we're learning how to, um, and it's not always seeing, so let me just clarify that. So one who sees in the dark, but maybe perceives is a better word. So um, we can perceive what we need 
to know uh, on the journey, whatever the story is, whatever the intention is, through hearing, through feeling, through just a simple knowing, um, not everybody's visual. So uh, keeping that in mind and letting go of that if you feel like you are not visual enough, um, you might feel it in your body and have a knowing sense. And this is a good way of cultivating what Sandra Ingerman, the uh, main proponent of this core shamanic practice, calls the discipline of self-revelation. So often, so often in our lives, we look to experts, we look to the outside, we want to uh, have affirmation or even um, the, the base knowledge from somebody else. But what we're learning to do is cultivate that discipline to be a disciple to our higher selves, the discipline of, of direct revelation. So if I have a question, if I want to know something, instead of looking outwards, I take that question inwards on a journey and uh, I connect my own meaning to whatever the perception is on that journey. So whether it's visuals or auditory, whatever sort of story or sensations, wherever it is I go. Um, and then part of the beauty and the advantage of sharing this in the circle afterwards is that sometimes it's in articulating it, in saying it, that we actually begin to recognize uh, and see. There's a little bit of remove to be able to see, just like if you share a dream with somebody something might click into place as you're sharing it. But what also happens, which is really beautiful, is that something that you may have experienced in your journey, maybe it didn't click entirely with you or you know, it was just sort of a part of whatever the adventure was, and yet for somebody else, maybe it clicks into place. Or maybe a lot of times what we'll find is that there are similar themes. Even though everybody has their own individual, individual experience, there might be a white horse that happens three or four times. You know, several people have the same kind of animal or the same um, sensation or discovery. Uh, you know, if we're going to the moon, maybe it's about illumination, whatever it is. Um, so the sharing is really a, a profound means of deepening the understanding, the, you know, getting that mirror that by speaking it out becomes a way of seeing it to then uh, have that direct revelation by having it mirrored back by saying it. Um, and also a means of, of recognizing how we're all interconnected. And uh, I feel like that is a good amount of information for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them to be in touch and uh, if you're curious, I look forward to seeing you on the night and we'll journey together. Go well. <laughs>